Adrian Goff is another very, very popular healer, really upbeat, joyous personality. You can't help just uh, feeling better again when you get around Adrian, and she'll be speaking. Adrian is our next speaker, and she is a magnificent crystal healer, a tremendous amount of expertise. She is an author and just one of the most beloved members of the Earthkeeper family. So please, a big Earthkeeper round of applause for Adrian Golf. Thank you. All right, so I want to say hello to all of you beautiful Earth Keepers. My heart is so full right now. It is a complete honor to be here with all of you beautiful people in this beautiful place and during this very special time. Now we've been a lot through a whole lot cosmically speaking lately and just look at how we're all shining. I gotta say, so today what I want to talk about is how we can thrive during these very interesting times that we find ourselves in. How to work with crystals to help clear out the old and help to align ourselves with our real missions for ourselves and for this beautiful planet that we are on. Because I'm getting the feeling that now is the time to make it so. So April, that was a pretty intense month for many people, wouldn't you say? There was this vast array of cosmic events all coming together that could have produced some kind of a shakeup or a reality check for many of us. So first, we had the first of four blood moon lunar eclipses. And there's four of them that are coming up. And when we have a series of four, that's known as a tetrad. And um, they're rare. Okay, they've only happened seven times since the birth of Christ, and every time it's happened, it's produced some kind of major shakeup on a big scale. Uh, we've had civilizations fall, nations rise, there have been earthquakes, there have been stock market crashes, that sort of major stuff happens during this time. Now, right after that, we had the Grand Cardinal Cross, which peaked around the 22nd of April. And again, this was about massive and cleansing change. It could have pushed you into some subconscious territory so that you could feel where you're stuck and out of alignment and then move yourself into your higher path. And this could have manifested in a way that might have felt pressurized to some. And that's because there were four major planets that were forming this tense square in the sky. And uh, the four planets were Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, and Pluto. These were all stationed in the cardinal signs. And the cardinal signs, they're all about action, instigating things, pushing things into motion, okay? So a lot of different themes could have come up for us. Um, we were forced to look into our subconsciousness to find out if we had any corruption going on within ourselves, but also in some of the larger structures, such as governments and that sort of thing. Uh, this also could have produced some kind of a personal desire for uh, going for your rights, uh, a need for upheaval, a need for change. Uh, during this time, relationships could have been tested. Uh, there might have been some conflict or some need to balance your relationships. So this was a big deal. And then right at the tail end of this, we had this meteor shower come in on the 23rd. Then we had another meteor shower come in on the 5th. And between those meteor showers, we had a solar eclipse. So that was a lot. And when you have eclipses, when you have meteor showers, what these tend to do um, is to amplify everything that is already going on with the planets. So, whew, you know, that was a lot to process in a very short amount of time. And I can tell you that it feels like everyone had their own experience with that. It was very personal. Um, I can share some things that I went through just to give you an idea. Definitely felt like I needed to go into my unconscious. Rather, I was pushed into my unconscious, kind of kicking and screaming, to look at things that I still needed to clear and to heal within myself on a personal level and also on bigger patterns in society. Also, this is a time of deep soul searching for me, really going within and asking myself, what is really important right now? What is important for me? What am I here to be doing? And it was a time to recognize some underexpressed parts of myself and to integrate those. And then the other big takeaway for me was that it is a time to act. It is time to stand in your power and to get out there and to share your gifts with the world. 
right? So how this looked like for me, just to give you a couple of examples. I had to look at some stuff in my subconscious, and especially it was around being a woman and what that means to me, but also putting that into the context of culture and society and expectations and old programs. And I had some old tears to cry. I think some of those tears were not even from this lifetime, right? And the bottom line was it was asking me to clarify what kind of woman that I want to be in this world as opposed to what kind of woman this world expects me to be, right? Now, another big theme for me was that I felt this strong push and this desire to do something really concrete in the 3D world to help with world problems. Now, this is really unusual for me because I don't usually pay attention to the news. But during this time, it was like I was on the internet. I was just looking up everything that was happening in the world. And I was really focused on like social injustice, how marginalized groups are being treated on this planet. I was drawn to look at environmental problems, different corruption, and that sort of thing. And I felt really pushed to volunteer for causes that I really care about and to get into activism again. So it was really interesting because you see some of you have known me for a few years and you know that for well over a decade I have identified as a spiritual healer and that is who I am and that is what makes me feel good and happy and fulfilled on this planet is to do my spiritual work. When I'm talking about the crystals nothing in the world makes me happier than that, right? But it was during this cardinal cross when all of a sudden this dormant aspect of myself was beginning to awaken. And this aspect was more like a spiritual warrior. And she was looking around on the planet. She's seeing a few problems happening. And she's wanting to do something about it, to take the power, because we all have the power to change things in reality that aren't working for us. So this is very exciting. So what I think is happening for me is that I'm standing here as my spiritual healer self. But this other aspect, this spiritual warrior, is going to rise up and take her rightful place alongside that healer. And a wonderful expansion and a synergy is going to happen. And I don't even know what that's going to look like yet. I mean, who knows? My next crystal class might be crystal healing for social justice. Or maybe I'm going to go on these little secret missions and travel all over the country and put crystal grids around all of the state capitals just to make sure that the political activities are aligned with the will of the people and the highest good for the entire planet and the environment and all of this kind of stuff. So it's really exciting. And I don't know what it is, but I do know that there's a new energy coming in. It's exciting. It's inspiring. And it feels like it's an expansion, a recognition of all aspects of me. So that's kind of what I've been going through. And so hopefully during this time period, you guys have all gotten your own personal clarification, maybe some new ideas for what you want to do, some new directions. And I wanted to share this one quote from Metatron as channeled by Tiburon because I think it really fits all of this. And it is, many of you have discovered a new purpose, experienced a renaissance, and are on newly creative paths that will continue and gain momentum in 2014. Others have chosen to remain on the same path, but with a renewed vigor, a new perspective, or a new group association. Many of you will yet discover a new purpose in 2014 and a talent that was previously dormant or unrealized. So yes, so the, what this all boils down to is this. You are here because you have something important to be doing. There is nobody else on this planet who is exactly like you. There is nobody else who has your array of talents, nobody else who has your exact multidimensional and incarnational experiences, nobody else who has your exact personality, your soul attributes. You are unique and you are one of a kind. And I just want you to like let that sink in for a second, you know, because your soul decided to come here during this pivotal time in human history because there's something you are capable of doing that can make this place better in your own unique way. You are here because you have a mission and you are uniquely qualified to fulfill that mission. 
it is really time for us to own that. It is really time for us to just believe in ourselves because we are so capable of amazing things. And just know this, you are an important piece of the universe and you are awakening. You are awakening right now. So, now is the time. And it feels to me like right now in this moment, we are perfectly poised to begin moving forward in a very positive direction. Did you know that Mars just went direct? This was just a few days ago, around the 19th and 20th. Now, when Mars goes direct, it's really helpful to us because Mars is all about action, passion, moving forward with our lives. So with Mars moving forward, we can move forward with the proper energy levels, with the proper enthusiasm, the proper wisdom to make it so. Okay, so that's what I want to talk about today. I'll get to the good stuff now, which is the crystals. So what I'm wanting to share with you guys is a powerful crystal layout. It involves using four different stones on the body. And the effect of this layout is to help you to clear away any last lingering stuff that may have been kicked up in the recent past, just to help you let that go. And then the second part of this layout is to help you to align with your highest mission and to bring in all of the energies, resources, synchronicities, and connections to make it so. So does that sound good? All right. So now I want to talk about the four different stones that I want to use in this layout. Have you guys heard of shungite? Has anybody heard of shungite? A few. Okay, if this is a new stone for you, it's time that you learned about shungite. Uh, now, shungite is a super miraculous stone. It's a black stone, and it's a combination of carbon and silicate minerals. Now, this is found in Russia, and it, they contain almost every element in the periodic table. They're very, very ancient, about 2 billion years old. But what sets shungite apart from all of the rest is that it contains very special molecules. These are called fullerenes, okay? Now, what a fullerene molecule is, it's a hollow molecular carbon cage. And they can form into the shape of dodecahedrons, as you can see up there. Now, uh, this might be familiar to those of us who've studied sacred geometry. Um, it's one of the building blocks of all of reality, okay? And scientists just discovered these fullerenes back in 1985, and it blew the scientific community away. Um, Science Magazine named fullerenes the molecule of the year, calling them the discovery that will most likely shape the course of scientific research in the years ahead. And they've already been discovering all kinds of applications for fullerenes um, in science, electronics, and nanotechnology. But what I think is really exciting is that there's a host of biological benefits uh, when we take in fullerenes into our body, okay? They're wonderful at killing bacteria. They're also long-acting antioxidants, getting rid of all of those free radicals that can wreak all kinds of havoc on our system. They are wonderful for boosting the immune system. Um, they suppress allergic and inflammatory diseases, and get this, they can actually slow down the growth of cancer cells in the body, and they can also slow down the activity of the AIDS virus, okay? So this is major medicine for the physical body. Um, they can boost uh, biological processes because these uh, fullerenes have a lot of micro elements and biologically active substances inside of them, okay? So it's wonderful for the physical body. Now, uh, in Russia, they've done all kinds of research with shungite. They have been aware of this stone for a very long time. They've been applying it for a lot of different things. Now, what they've noticed is just having a shungite, direct contact with the skin, it can really help the physical body, especially if you have any kind of pain in the body. Putting shungite over the pain can alleviate that. It's also really great for a lot of different illnesses, especially problems in the musculoskeletal system, um, skin problems, and that sort of thing. Um, and it's also great if you have wounds, if you have injuries. They've noticed that it speeds up the healing process of things going on. So if you have anything going on in the physical body, you might want to try some shungite and see if it helps turn the situation around. 
Now, what's also very exciting about this stone uh, for me as a crystal healer is that it is one that is a powerhouse transmuter of negative energy of all kinds, okay? So whether, it be, whether it's energy that you've received like through negative thought forms coming from other people, psychic attack, whether you're having your own lower emotional states that you're working through, or especially if it might be um, electromagnetic in nature, like um, energy from our technologies that can cause harm in our auric field. We have found, the researchers have found that shungite can actually eradicate this. So there was even a study, um, let's see, there was a study from the Tula Scientific Research Institute, New Medical Technologies, that showed that the presence of shungite materials close to the source of cellular frequency radiation significantly weakens their effect on the human body, okay? So this is a great stone to wear for psychic protection and just to keep your auric field intact, okay? So it's a super purifying kind of a stone. Now, um, the people in Russia have also noticed that these shungites can really help uh, to neutralize all kinds of uh, waterborne contaminants as well. And they've been using shungite in water purification systems since the 90s. And what they've found is that it can uh, help to eliminate nitrates, heavy metals, pesticides, volatile organics, pharmaceuticals, chlorine, and fluoride. So wonderful for that. Now, here's something that I think is, like, really cool. In Russia, they've created what's known as shungite rooms. So imagine an entire room that is made out of shungite that you can sit in. Okay, so they create these in Russia. Now, uh, one really great example was during the, the Bells in School tragedy. There was a, very, you know, all of these poor children underwent a lot of trauma. They put the children inside of one of these shungite rooms, and what they noticed was that the trauma that they went through, the heavy emotions seemed to just lift right from these children. And they were happy, and they were smiling, and they were making art inside of this room with, like, puppy dogs and, like, flowers and sunshine, okay? So this was healing very deep emotional trauma in these children. Now, they also have rooms like this in prison systems because the prisons over there can be pretty intense, right? And sometimes the guards get really depleted and drained from that job. So they would put the guards inside of these rooms to help them regain their vitality and their balance and their sense of well-being. So they've already noticed that there is a lot of benefit. Man, I need to get a whole bunch of shungite and just build like a temple out of it. Y'all want to come and sit in it? I know I need to see if I can make that happen. Okay, so shungite is a stone that can help us on all of these different levels. If you don't have one yet, I highly recommend that you find one. Now, moving on to the second one I want to talk about, quantum quattro. Now, this is a stone that has to be one of the strongest cleansing, clearing, and purging stones that I work with, and it's also brilliant for spiritual activation and working with clearing the chakras. Okay, let me explain what quantum quattro is. Okay, it is a combination stone that has four different copper-bearing minerals inside of a matrix of smoky quartz, okay? And these four minerals are all powerful in their own right. We're talking shatakite, dioptase, malachite, and chrysocolla. They're all these beautiful earth-colored, like, blues and greens, okay? And anytime you have a copper stone, what that tends to do, I love them as a crystal healer because if there's any energy blockages in your body or any negative energy that you're carrying anywhere, if you take a copper-based stone, it acts like a little magnet. It just sucks that, that lower energy right out of the body. So imagine four of these stones inside of a smoky quartz, which is also clearing, and, and quartz is amplifying. So just having a small piece of quantum quattro is like having a giant powerhouse mineral. Okay, now uh, quantum quattro has the ability to clear and heal on multiple levels of the being, okay? It works on the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, the different spiritual bodies, and even on a planetary level. This is a stone that you can take into power spots or places on the land that need balancing. It can help clear things from the land. But it's really great with 
every single system of the body, okay? It can have a rejuvenating effect on the body and a healing effect and a clearing effect. But it goes beyond the physical body. Um, as we know, a lot of times when we're having a physical problem, there's usually some kind of an energetic source, right? And this source is usually something emotional or something mental that happened that contributed to it. So this stone actually helps to go to these deeper levels and bring the source to your awareness, okay, so that you understand why this illness has manifested in the first place. And then this stone has the added effect of clearing that energy, okay? And it isn't it isn't limited to just this lifetime. This stone is so powerful that it can go back through the incarnational cycles. If some of the sources of these problems were in other lifetimes, it can help clear down uh, through the timelines. And it works with the family line and on any kind of karmic issue that you may have carried forward from other lifetimes, okay? So it's a very complete kind of a clearing stone. Now what's also exciting about Quantum Quattro I love to use it in my sessions when I'm feeling called to help somebody with spiritual activation, okay? This stone really awakens the third eye chakra, the crown chakra, the pineal, the pituitary glands, and can help to really tune into the higher realms. When I'm working on people, sometimes it's really fascinating because I'll start seeing like light codes coming in. Or this is the part that really gets my attention. With Quantum Quattro, sometimes I start seeing the DNA strands and I start seeing little pieces of them like light up and start to come online. Okay, so this is one for DNA activation. Um, overall, a great stone for protection, for clearing. It's known for wholeness, peace, and higher dimensional living. Okay, so moving on, the third stone in this layout is Fulgurite. Now, Fulgurite's a fascinating character. It has a very interesting and dramatic creation story. So, uh, Fulgurite is known as petrified lightning. It is created when lightning strikes the sand and instantaneously melts the sand, and then it congeals into these glass tubes, okay? So, if you're a person who is sensitive to feeling energies, when you're holding a fulgurite, you can feel this like electrical pulse going through it. It's a very, very quick uh, kind of a feeling with it. Um, they can instantly clear. They can instantly activate. And I've noticed that it, it just brings in like sudden aha, sudden insights that you didn't have before. Like just to give you one example. I knew that I wanted to present a layout like this to you guys, but I didn't know which stones to include. So I walked into my crystal room. I asked my crystals, okay, which stones are supposed to be in the layout? I see my fulgurite over there. I'm like, okay, fulgurite. I picked it up. And then like lightning striking me, it's like the rest of the layout was just downloaded instantaneously in my mind, and I knew which other crystals needed to go in this layout, and I knew exactly how to work with it. So that's how fast these sudden insights can come when you're working with lightning-like fulgurite. So I wanted to talk also about something beautiful, and that is how the indigenous cultures have historically worked with this stone. See, they always recognized it as a stone that could help you to manifest your prayers and your positive visions. And so they had a reverence for this stone, and they knew how to work with it. And what they would do is they would go into a sacred, holy kind of state of mind, and then they would say their prayers, and they would blow the prayers through the tube up toward the heavens where they would be received and the prayers would be answered. And I just think that's such a beautiful way to work with this stone. Uh, because the, the indigenous people, they know a whole lot about this. They're really connected in. Okay, so it's been known that this is a stone for instant and quick manifestation. All right, so the other thing about fulgurite, what I've noticed, it feels like there's a spiraling of energy with it. It feels like a little vortex, like you're carrying a little vortex in your hand. And it creates vortexes. So when I place a piece of fulgurite above my head, it like creates this pipeline that's like directly to spirit. And it helps like this higher energy transference 
or download to come in. So that's one way to think about it. You know, it's almost like receiving like your Reiki attunements for those of us here who may have undergone that kind of a process, right? You go to a Reiki master and they do this wonderful attunement or ceremony with you. And afterwards, you have received access to a higher level of that Reiki energy and you're able to carry that and to transmit it. That's kind of how Fulgurite can work. It can help you to, to be able to access higher and higher levels of spiritual energy that you need in your life. So very exciting. And here is the part that I just think is so cool that I just found out like two days ago. So Fulgurite joins Shungite as the other known rock type that naturally contains fullerenes. Remember, fullerenes, those are the ones that appear in shungite, those miraculous dodecahedron-shaped molecules. All right, and that's not very well known. Um, the only reason I found that out was that I was reading some very scientific information about fullerenes in general, and there was this little bitty side note on the bottom of the page that said, though, there's two natural sources of fullerenes, and that's shungite, which everybody knows about, but also they're in fulgurite. And how that happens, I guess what the article was saying is that when the lightning strikes the sand, there's organic material in the sand and then it, the, the, strike, the lightning strike will actually help rearrange those molecules into fullerenes, all right? So this layout has two of these stones that have fullerenes. Very cool, I didn't even know that till much later. Okay, now last but definitely not least, I want to talk about Libyan gold tektite. Now, this is another one that has a very dramatic creation story. Uh, Libyan gold tektite is a glassy material that formed as the result of a meteorite crash in the Sahara Desert around the areas of Libya and Egypt. Okay, so talking about a tektite here. Now, some of you guys might be familiar with like moldavite. That's also a tektite, and that one formed in Czechoslovakia. So this is the one that actually fell in Egypt and in Libya. Now, anytime you have a tektite, again, if you're sensitive to energy, you'll actually feel the vibration of this stone. It's very, it, you might feel heat, you might feel tingling, but it's a very intense energy that this stone tends to carry. Now, tektites in general are very good at cleansing and clearing all of the chakras activating the chakras, and just energizing the body in general. So if you're ever feeling sluggish, depleted, pick up a tektite, and it'll help to replenish your energy. But what's special about Libyan gold tektite is that it has a strong connection and a resonance with the solar plexus chakra. Okay, and this is our chakra that's all about standing in our personal power and being able to manifest our visions in the world. Okay, now so Libyan gold tektite is one of the best ones I've found when my solar plexus just really needs to be tuned up and functioning at the highest possible level. When you get a Libyan gold tektite and you put it right on your belly, oh, I just never want to take it off. It feels so good. Okay, so this is a stone that also connects in with the idea of our inner royalty, our inner queen or our inner king, right? And think about it this way. If you're a king or if you're a queen, it's pretty easy to manifest things, right? All you have to do is say what it is that you want and wave your hand, and about 20 people are scattering around trying to make it happen for you. Okay? And we've all got that within us. Like all, we can all get very clear about what we want and put it out into the universe and then watch it appear into our reality. So Libyan gold tektite is one that can help us to get into that frame of mind in that state so that you can make things happen for yourself. It's also a stone of releasing cords from the past, letting go of anything that's holding you down, as well as setting appropriate boundaries. So think about just standing clearly in your power and setting the boundaries. This is a stone that can make you get into that space. Now, just as a side note, Libyan gold tektite can also be used to help you to tune into the Akashic records, and especially to receive information about ancient Egypt or the extraterrestrial civilizations that may have influenced Egypt, such as Assyrians. So, if you want to connect in with our star brothers and sisters, uh, this is a stone that might help you to attune to their realm. Okay, and now let me just get to the layout. So, now I want to share with you guys how to work with these four crystals to be able to align with your true mission on the planet. Okay, so let me just read the purpose. 
It's to assist in clearing your energy, body, and consciousness of any old and limiting beliefs, patterns, and energies that are not aligned with your highest vision. So part of this is about clearing the way. And the second part is about strengthening your manifestation power and bringing in the energies, resources, synchronicities, and circumstances needed to make it so. Okay, so what you're going to need to be able to do this is one of each of the stones that I've talked about. You'll need a shungite, a quantum quattro, a fulgurite, and a Libyan gold tektite. Now, before you begin with the layout, there's a little bit of homework. The first thing I would suggest that you do is to actually write a mission statement describing what your truest soul purpose is. Like, what is your reason for incarnating onto this planet, all right? And I know that some of us are pretty clear about what we're here to do, you know, but others of us still might be figuring that out, and that's perfectly okay. So if you're still trying to define what your soul mission is, I would suggest thinking about things like, what were you really passionate about when you were a little child? Because I think when we were young, we were still so connected with our true essence, and we were able to tap into that. I know when I was a little kid, I was asking for rock polisher for Christmas. I always loved the mineral kingdom. You know, I didn't care about Barbie or any of that. Uh, I knew I loved the planet. You know, I loved the earth. All of these were early clues about what I was to be doing later. So think about that. Also think about what you've been drawn to study. You know, if you went to school, what was your degree in? What kind of classes have you taken? Because there's probably a reason why you've taken those classes. It's probably a part of your mission in some way. Think about your hobbies. Think about what interests you. What do you like to read about? Okay, and then just do your best to come up with a few sentences describing what you believe your mission is on the planet. It's really good to do this exercise and to get clear because once we're clear within ourselves, that's the energy we're putting out and that's what we're going to create. Okay, and if you still don't know, you could keep it simple. Something like, I am here to use my soul gifts to make a difference on the planet. Boom, there you go, mission statement. Okay, so before you do any work with crystals and stones on the body, it's always a, a good idea to cleanse and clear the stones before you begin because crystals can absorb negative or discordant energies that they are exposed to because they're trying to purify the environment, right? So you can cleanse stones in many ways. Uh, I don't really have time to go into that right now, but you can look up my YouTube video, Adrian Goff Cleansing Crystals, and I go through that in detail. So you want to cleanse your crystals before you begin. Now, also, I always call for backup. I always call in my higher self. I always call in the divine source, and I always call in any spirit helpers that I like to work with. Because when we ask spirit to come in, they do. And then things go much better, okay? So you cleanse your stones, you call in spirit, you've got your mission statement, now we start the layout. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is to lie down and just get nice and comfortable. Then I'm gonna suggest that you actually read your mission statement out loud. Because there's something powerful about speaking it. Speaking it makes it so. Okay, so you wanna say that mission statement. And here, now we'll do the first part of the layout, which is the clearing part. So what you're going to do is you're going to take um, the quantum quattro and the shungite stones, the first two I talked about. You're going to place them right over your heart chakra, okay? This is arguably the most important center. And you want to place your hands over them and just hold an intention in your mind. I am cleansing and clearing the chakra of any energies that are not aligned with my highest good. Because when we hold an intention while we're working with the stones, they respond to that intention and it works much better. Okay, so you just hold this intention, hold your hands over the stones, and um, allow the stones to be cleansing and clearing this chakra. And you're going to feel it. You'll feel things purifying inside of yourself. So leave those stones in place for as long as it feels good to you. Maybe just a minute or two or longer. Whatever works for you. Okay? So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to move those stones. So we're going to take the quantum quattro, we're going to move it up one chakra to the throat. We're going to take that shungite and move it down one chakra to the solar plexus. Hold your hands over the stones, hold the cleansing intention, and allow that clearing to happen. Next, we're going to take those stones and we're going to move it up a chakra again. So the quantum quattro will jump up to the third eye. The shungite will go down to the sacral chakra. Hold your hands over it, hold the cleansing intention, allow these areas to be cleared. And then finally, we'll end by taking the quantum quattro, moving it to the crown chakra at the top of the head, 
moving that shungite down to the root chakra at the base and just hold your hands there and allow that cleansing and clearing to happen, okay? So after you go through that exercise, everything's gonna be nice and cleansed and clear and you're gonna feel lighter and better. Now, parts, now we're gonna do the second part of the layout. You leave the shungite in place. You take that quantum quattro and put it right over your third eye. Now we're gonna get the other two stones that I talked about. The fulgurite, we're gonna put it vertically above the crown chakra. So it's creating a nice connection or pipeline to the higher realms so that the energy can start coming down and activating you and, you, and start to um, bring in more information and insights and inspirations about your path. So you're gonna get an infusion coming in from that fulgurite, okay? You're gonna take that Libyan gold tectite and guess what? We're gonna put it right over the solar plexus and allow it to start turning that center on, activating it, um, and helping you to align with that part of you that knows how to manifest like royalty, okay? And so now you have the four stones in place. I would suggest leaving them there for a minimum of 15 minutes. Typically, it takes about 11 minutes or so for the crystalline energies to fully integrate. Now, while this is happening, I would suggest breathing, tuning in, meditating. Because with these four powerful stones, you're bound to start getting some kind of insights, inspiration, ideas about, oh, this is the next step I can take, and that sort of thing. Um, you could also just use this time to visualize and feel what your life is going to look like when you are firmly standing in your power and doing your highest mission for this planet. And just allow yourself to play with what that looks like. And that's also a part of creating it. Okay? So that is the layout that I wanted to share with you guys. Hopefully you all got a handout so this, all, this information is here if you want to try it. I just want to thank you uh, for being here. I'm so grateful that I have this opportunity to share this information with all of you, and I wish you happy manifesting, and may you, may you manifest every wonderful blessing that you can imagine. Thank you so much.